introduce yourselves and say where, like where you're from, how you represent the whites. My name is Sapir. Um, I'm a American and Israeli. Um, junior entrepreneurship major from Asheville, North Carolina. Um, hey, my name's Aiden. I'm a senior in mechanical engineering. I'm f Australian American, but I spent about 13 years in Australia until college, really. Hi, uh, I'm Andres. I'm a junior finance major. I was born in San Francisco, but I lived in Quito, Ecuador, uh, since pretty much the age of seven until I graduated high school. Hi, I'm Rebecca, and I'm from Dublin, Ireland, and I'm a criminology and psych major. So you gotta have a certain amount of sun, but you can't have too much. If you get too much sun, then you run into this the problem of UV rays and potentially getting skin cancer. And so what happens is, as we move away from this area, where the body needs to have dark, lots of melanin, high doses of melanin to protect us from the ultraviolet rays of the sun, as we move away from there and go north or go south, what happens is we need the body to produce less melanin. So that, and then what happens is the body lightens. Do you guys, do you talk about it? Do you talk about being white? We don't fight over races as much at home, but it's a lot about religion and religion more so. Yeah. So I feel like that kind of like takes over more so than your ethnicity or race. It's more so you go by like your religion. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I, I, I've been referred to more as gringo than blanco. It's uh -huh. not about me being white, it's about me being American. Oh. It's not a very nice history in Australia, uh -huh. for being completely honest. Like it was what they did to the Aborigines wasn't particularly it's you get, not, how, not too how, far Do you guys stretched. talk about it a lot? How often is, do you talk about it? Like in schools and... Um, I don't know. If you are a little like shade different, you can kind of figure out where or like which region they're kind of more so from. So let me say a couple things when we talk about the whites, what we're talking about here, so we're on the same page. White is a reference to skin. And let me just say something about this, like, so we get some kind of sense of what we know about skin. Homo sapiens emerged in the Nilotic region of Africa. The original two-leggeds, us, the original two-leggeds had dark skin. As we moved out of the Nilotic region, this is the equator right here, so just follow the equator. The reason we have dark skin is there's an adaptation, a DNA adaptation. The sun has always been dangerous. It's not a new thing that people get skin cancer. The sun's always been dangerous to people. And, you know, people didn't have hats and people didn't have clothes. And the body naturally is going to develop a protectorant, a way of protecting against the ultraviolet rays of the sun that are going to give us cancer. And so the body produces one enzyme called melanin, which just happens to also turn the skin dark. And, but it protects us. And it is, but, but we need sun because sun is really important for calcium and vitamin D. So you got to have a certain amount of sun, but you can't have too much. If you get too much sun, then you run into this pro the problem of of UV rays and potentially getting skin cancer. And so what happens is, as we move away from this area, where the body needs to have dark, lots of melanin, high doses of melanin to protect us from the ultraviolet rays of the sun, as we move away from there and go north or go south, what happens is we need the body to produce less melanin. So that, and then what happens is the body lightens. So notice how the further away you go, up in this area and in this area in the south, people have lighter skin. And so that's an adaptation. So you don't, if you're, if you're living in this area where you don't, you're not going to get a lot of sun and you have really dark skin, that's a problem because you're not getting enough of the sun's rays to produce sufficient amounts of calcium and vitamin D. And if you're living in the area close to the equatorial area where you're going to get lots and lots of sun, if you have light skin, you're going to need to be protected all the time from the sun, from the sun's rays. And so hence, now we can do that. We have, you know sun lotion and sunscreen and we have clothes and hats and all sorts of things, right? So that's the first thing when we talk about the whites. Uh, the second thing 
just kind of look at the countries here, the percentage of countries, populations that are white. Okay, so all of these countries we don't consider white. Very white to not very white, okay? Just kind of note that this is what we're looking at. Like, who's considered white in Ireland? I mean, a very large po uh, part of the population is white. I would say probably 80%. Um, but pretty much, if you're white, you're white. Do you guys, do you talk about it? Do you talk about being white? It's gotten more popular, like, as more immigrants have come in to the country. But I feel like it's just a norm to be white, so, in Ireland. Is white a term that you use in Ireland? Not, not as much as here. Uh -huh. Like, I feel like here it's a lot more like you go, you, you, at home you don't kind of say your ethnicity as much as you do here. And like, just on a day-to-day -day or when you're filling out like a form or things like that. Uh-huh. So that's a, like a, and so it's becoming more and more popular, you say, or more common. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Like, is there a history of white people or a story of white people or something that you kind of hang on to? Or? We don't fight over races as much at home, but... It's a lot about religion and religion more so. Yeah. So I feel like that kind of like takes over more so than your ethnicity or race. It's more so you go by like your religion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the conflict in Ireland yeah. has really been uh -huh. the, the unionists and the nationalists. Yeah. Let's, we're going to talk just Ecuador, your Ecuador experience. I guess I'd say whoever looks white is probably considered white. I mean, a lot of the friends I had, they weren't necessarily dark skinned, but they weren't as white as, as I am, at least by color of skin. But, um, and a lot of the people in Ecuador aren't 100% Ecuadorian, like, purely. It's huh? a lot of Spanish ancestry, and there's a lot of what we call mestizos, which are a mix between the original, like, the Spanish who came in during the conquest and then the original Ecuadorians who live there. So do you guys, do you, guys, do you talk about people as being white or being los blancos? I mean, I don't. Uh, it certainly isn't something I do just because I guess I'm part of that group, but I certainly have been referred to as un blanco. I mean, a lot, you know, more than, uh -huh. more than like once. Is that, I mean, is it common in a way? Like yeah, uh, but more than, I mean, there's a lot of Americans in Ecuador, just because there's a lot of Americans yeah, yeah, everywhere, yeah. man. But um, I, I guess I, I'd, I've been referred to more as gringo than blanco. It's uh -huh. not about me being white. It's about me being American. Oh. Okay, so here's, this is important in Ecuador. So starting about 20 years ago, many, Ecuador switched to the dollar, right? And you, so you used to have a currency called the Sucre, and you switched to the dollar. And then um, as a result, and then opened the borders up, so many Americans came and started retiring there. So now you got these Americans walking around, and you have you walking around who's Ecuadorian-American, and very different. Do people see you the same way as they see them? As they see the, the Americans who went there to retire? Yeah. yeah well, yeah. I mean, I, I can't say what they're going to think of me just looking at, like, just by looking at me with their first yeah. impression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I assume if they came to know me, they'd understand that that's not the case. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, and, and also because my father is Ecuadorian. Yeah. So it's, it, it's not, I'm not just like, you know, like a, I mean, I'm not like both white parents from the United States just going to Ecuador. Is there a story of white people in Ecuador? In, in, it's common. In what sense? Like, just like, wh what's the white position? The elites in Ecuador mostly all look like you, except in Guayaquil, right? They look like you and I. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I mean, I, I guess it depends on what you, how you define like the elites. Do you mean like the top earners? In yeah, the country. yeah, yeah, and, yeah. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know what the list looks like in terms of who's the most, who's on the top of the socioeconomic ladder, but I'd say that they're all either white or mestizo for the most part. Uh huh. Um, uh -huh. But I mean, there's there there is a huge influence. Like the influence can't be understated uh, when the when the Spanish people obviously came in the in the 1500s and yeah and and conquered uh, you know pretty much the whole continent. I mean, except for Brazil, but. Um, I, I don't know if there's necessarily a story about whiteness, but there's whiteness sort of almost like built into the... But when people talk about La Conquista, right, the Spanish coming and conquering, do they talk about the Spanish as white people, as Europeans? They talk about Europeans coming, right? Yeah. But they, do they, does skin come into it, or is it just kind of Europeans? 
I, I guess it'd probably depend on who, you, on who you're talking to, but okay. All right. it's probably Europeans for the most part. Okay, yeah. All right. How about you? What, what's, who, who's white? Majority of the population nowadays in Australia is white, but it's, the history of the country isn't embraced in that. Obviously, indigenous Australians weren't white. Mm-hmm. And there's still a significant population, but ultimately the country is predominantly white now. And that's how, what you would deem considered average when walking in the streets or in the schools, mm-hmm. that would be seen as the social norm when looking at the population. And, okay, and what's the story of white people in Australia? Well, technically, they're either immigrants or descendants of technically convicts from England is the story of white people in Australia. Uh-huh. The, indigenous, yeah, the indigenous Australians were eventually kind of, it's not a very nice history in Australia, uh-huh. if we're being completely honest. Like, it was what they did to the Aborigines wasn't particularly... It's you get, not, how, not too how, far do you guys stretched. talk about it a lot? How often is, do you talk about it? Like in schools? And- um, we have to do, at least in my school, we did two years of history of the Aboriginal Civil Rights Movement and the American Civil Rights Movement on top of that. We did them kind of in a comparison, kind of saw the contrast and the similarities uh-huh. between the two. But then also you have, in your earlier years, I think around grade seven, eight, you started to learn about the... Um, the Stolen Generation in Australia, uh-huh. which was kind of the, I don't know if you're familiar with it. Uh-huh. It's kind of Can the, you just um, say what it is? The briefly? Stolen Generation is when Aborigines were kind of put into camps almost, and they tried and to... Aborigines are the indigenous, the indigenous Australians were put uh-huh. into camps, and they were kind of, we, they basically were tried to breed them out in a way, and it wasn't very, that's a simple, a very simple overview of what it was, mm-hmm. but then... They were referred to as the stolen generation as the kids were taken from their parents. But yeah, that's kind of the, so the story of whites is all, they're all basically of British descent and they came over when the British uh-huh. first went to Australia. So do you reference, do you refer to yourself in Australia? Do white people refer to themselves as white? Yes. Yeah. Mm, well, honestly, it's, everyone calls themselves Australian. Like it's not British Australian. Yeah. It's just Australian. So you, so you have a way of wanting to distinguish Australian white people have a way of wanting to distinguish yourselves from British white people. Kind of like the Irish, you have a very similar thing, right? You want to distinguish yourselves from British white people, right? So if you say white, then it's like, wait, hang on, a white, then that kind of aligns you with the Brits. And yeah, I would agree. Like, if you just watch a simple sporting event, you can see they distance themselves from the British as yeah. much as possible. Okay, yeah, all right, I got that. How about in Israel? So what's considered white? Are, are, white yeah. Isra- are you They're, considered white in Israel? Yeah, I, I'd say so, because um, I'd say that it's like kind of sectioned off in like Ashkenazi and like uh, Sephardic, uh-huh. meaning like more European or like uh, Northern African. So, I mean, you can kind of tell who's Sephardic and who's Ashkenazi. I don't know. If you are a little, like, shade different, you can kind of figure out where or, like, which region they're kind of more so from. Mm-hmm. So, and, yeah. and so, like, to be clear, right, so Ashkenazi mm-hmm. Jews are Jewish peoples who are descendants from European Jews. Yeah. Right. And so, meaning that the, the, the lineage goes in so many different countries. Yeah. Well. There's so many uh, more like, I don't know, Polish, German, Austria, that whole area. Uh huh. And there's a lot of Jews that are just, or like Israeli people that just like look white.